Hi, good afternoon. Dan Thomas here again from the Love March Movement. And we're fasting every single Wednesday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We are dedicated to going hard before the Lord concerning sexual purity and the family. Because guess what? Strong family, strong nation. Yeah. Real talk. All right. Yo, the topic for this week, we'll jump right into its very, very serious stuff. Prof being today. You tomorrow. My goodness. All right. Isaiah 59 verse um, 7 and 8 and 14 and 15. We're just going to read that quick and we'll talk more about that. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. Verses 14 and 15. So justice is driven back. And righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. Doesn't this sound exactly like what is going on um, with, with Prof. Bain right now? Right? If you've been following in the newspapers and reading the articles, you know, really, really serious stuff um, have been happening with him. Where he spoke in um, the Belizean case, right? Um, against the repeal of the Bogri law, he, he provided evidence that substantiated that the, the Bogri law in Belize should remain in, intact, right? And um, he presented scientific facts, and now he is being, his job is being um, challenged, right? Because they're saying that he's not fit to lead it um, chart. Now, it's very, very serious stuff. They are saying that his scientific facts, he, he should not have shared his research, right? As a professor. He should not have shared his research and he should be penalized for sharing his scientific research. This is very, very serious. Stuff. Truth is stumbling. Now, this, this guy, um, he's, a, he's a Christian, but most of all, he is a professor who has cared for MSM, men who have, been, um, have sex with men, for many years, right? In the height of the HIV epidemic, he was caring for them, taking care of them when everybody else didn't know what to do. He was the one leading the charge in caring for them. We endorse that kind of love, and we said, we stand with you in solidarity, Prof. Bain, with the, the, your love and, and the, the, the truth, the declaration of truth in the public square. Now, this is a serious, serious thing that is happening, though. The LGBT agenda is raising its ugly head all over the Caribbean right now. No, we must take note and we must look at what we can do, right? We soon jump into our three points and three people. That's the format that we use every week. All right, just before that though, um, just to read this. We need to decide on what philosophies we will base our laws. Is it the Judeo-Christian worldview, which, which says that there is a right and there is a wrong, right? And that leads to life. Or is it the atheistic worldview that, that says, oh, there's really no wrong or right. There's, no, there's not even any truth, really, right? And that leads to death, euthanasia. Um, abortion, um, homosexuality, right? all of these things lead to death, right? Sin leads to death. All right, so that's an important point. So I encourage all of us to be praying, be praying for Professor Bain in this difficult time. Please, please be writing letters to the paper and look out for more powerful action points soon to come your way. All right, three points and three people, that's how we do it every time. So first, the first point, right? We want to pray that the Caribbean, its people, and the government and the leaders would recognize what the LGBT agenda means for our region, as it has meant for every nation all over the world. Submit or else. That's what that's what it means, right? I pray that, and we need to pray. We want to pray in this first point that we would be upset and distraught enough to stand against the LGBT agenda while still loving the LGBT community, right? Because there are individuals that we care for, but we cannot stand for the agenda and its implications for our the freedom of speech and, and, and conscience. Right? We need to decide on what philosophies we will base our laws. The Judeo Christian worldview that leads to life or the atheistic worldview that leads to death. And Pray that we would we'll fight for the retention of our burger laws, right? So that's the first point. The second point is, we want to pray that Christians all over the Caribbean would arise with one voice, with one regional united prayer and stand against this neocolonialism, the threats to the loss of freedom of speech and religion. Look, I understand it, you know, the Christians, we are, we are the ones who are really supposed to stand right now, you know. Right, we, and we expect enough other people to get upset and stand. But I know that it is our responsibility because we are the salt of the earth. Let me just read this Matthew 5, um, 13 and 
Yeah, 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. What does salt do? It preserves from decay. And this is one way. And it, it preserves from decay and it causes, it, it, it um, pushes thirst. Right? But definitely we need to preserve our nations, our Caribbean. This is our Caribbean. God has entrusted the earth to men. And we are, we are now to arise and preserve our region from the from the um the effects of this agenda. The loss of our freedom of speech, our freedom of conscience, our freedom of religion. The thing is very serious. And if we are not in this fight, if we are not standing for truth, how can we love? How can we love? Jesus, who is the truth, if we are not standing for truth. Very, very serious stuff. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we must stand for pres preserving our Caribbean. All right, cool. Pray. The third thing, we want to pray that our leaders, the leaders of CARICOM, who have committed to, to instituting laws that will be against discrimination, right? They said it. Check. Look at, go, go to the CARICOM website. Check what they said in, in the, um, one of the last press releases, right? That they would realize the road that they are heading down into institutionalizing what has happened with Professor Bain, right? Now, our, our, our region is under significant pressure from outside forces, persons who want to impose their perspective of truth and of right and wrong on our, our, our region. Right? We want to pray that the CARICOM leaders would not give in to that pressure and that they would realize the road that they're headed down. All right. Yo, three points now. I mean, three people now. The three people that we, we want to pray for this week, the very first person, obviously, we want to pray for Professor B. I want to pray that he would be strengthened um, in this difficult time. Pray that um, that you would not bow to the pressure, right? That he would be given back his job, right? He has served the LGBT community with great love and skill, and we affirm that. And we say, Prof, we stand with you, and we are praying for you, right? The second, the second person I want to pray for, I want to pray for Dane Lewis, who is um, the leader of JFLAG, one of the one of the main organizations um, in Jamaica, which is blowing the horns of cultural imperialism, right? Pray that he would turn his life over um, to Jesus and become a transforming agent for truth and love, right? And the third person I want to pray, I want to pray for. Um, Maurice Tomlinson, who is the leader of this organization called AIDS Free World, which has launched um, the attack on our constitution to, in the effort to um, try and repeal our buggery laws. Right? Want to pray? Want to pray for him that like he will also come to know Jesus Christ. Um, those two last gentlemen there, please, what is happening with, with the challenge of Prof. Bain's job, and they have issued um, statements by way of letters to the editor and, and stuff like that, right? So they're really happy about that. We want to pray for them individually, that they would come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and the Savior, the transforming love of Christ, because he loves them and he cares for them, right? Cares for all of us, um, and that's amazing. All right, I just want to announce a half-night prayer meeting coming up May 30th at Grace Missionary, right? It's put on by um, Prayer 2000, right? Half-night, so it's going from 6 to 12, Right, we invite all the love marchers to come out and pray. We need to be praying more about these things. The prayer breaks the thing first in the spirit and it's manifested in the natural. Right, um, Father's Day March. Yo, there's a Father's Day March coming the day before um, Father's Day. The Saturday morning, 7 o'clock at Mandela Park, we're going to Emancipation Park. We invite all the men. This is a national statement for man and man. You see me? Yeah, we have to stand up. And then the love march, book it in the calendar from now. From now, from now, September 30, 2014, we will be marching for the retention of the Bogula. We will be marching, saying, we are pledging ourselves, we are pledging ourselves to love and loyalty in our families, right? And then the 30th, we're praying for se we're marching for sexual purity, and it's a really intense prayer march. So we invite everybody to come out and stand with us in these perilous times. We need the prayer. We need to stand in the public square and defend the truth in the public square. Know that real talk, right? Man. Let us be praying. Let us be faithful in this stand for the family and for sexual purity in the Caribbean. Bless.